Hi, I'm Stephen Cronin. Thanks again for joining me today. This is uh, my interpretation of a photograph I took uh, a couple of years ago now in Sutton Park. Um, simple woodland scene framed by the tree trunks here as we walk through a little figure man and his dog into the sort of light beyond the, the shadows here in the foreground. So let's have a look at the photograph. So this is the photograph that I took a couple of years ago now, I think it was, in Sutton Park, one, uh, one Sunday afternoon. So I might just add a, a little figure somewhere walking off, little man and his dog maybe, walking off into the woods, trying to create some light coming through the, through, the, uh, through the trees. So let's have a look at the materials. From the palette we've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard and crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red using a large on Ranson Ake and 15 by 11 Fabriano. So one last quick look at the photo. So we'll start off with a bit of clear water. Then we're going to go a bit of raw sienna, a little bit of lemon yellow, mix the two together and bring that down. Sort of general background green of the foliage this is and then bring that down into the floor area as well. A slight angle. I'm going to clean the brush. Just add a little bit of blue, hint of blue in the sky that will be able to see between the trees. Just brush that in there, something like that. Just catching it as it's falling down. It's coming down there. Yes. In fact, what I want to do is put a bit more. Do the floor too dark because I want the shadows to, to show up well. That's a nice little background. Now I'm going to take the rigger brush and I'm just going to pop in a whole load of little trees and trunks and things growing. I'm going to draw some of that before it comes down soon. Stop all the paint from coming down too far. So I'm just going to go back to the rigger brush. Just carry on popping in all these trees in the distance. Because the paint was still wet, it'll just soften off. There's no water, so I'm not going to worry about reflections. a little bit more. I'm just flicking up and down with the number three rigger brush this one is. These will be the most distant of the of the trunks. Just soaking up the water on a, that's pulled in the bottom of the paper. Let's clean that brush a little bit. I'm just going to go back in a bit of lemon yellow, a bit of Raw sienna. And what I'm doing, I'm just working out the land. Rather than just go straight across like that, I'm just, just trying to get more random effects out. I'm just dab, 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 dab. And the land is just slightly sloping from right to left. Something like that. A bit of in there as well. 
bits of mud here and there. But again, I don't want to do it too dark because the darker I do it, the less the shadows will show. Let's clean that brush again. Get this paper flat against the board, and then I'm going to put a few more, go back to the rigger brush and put a few more trunks in. Bit of brown, bit of blue, bit of yellow. And these ones. Slightly stronger, I have to keep reloading the brush. Sometimes I'm sort of stopping halfway through as I'm flicking it up rather than just do it in one go, just to get sort of random shapes and patterns and things. Just constantly having to reload the brush. Brown, blue, a little bit of green in there as well. I tend to slightly avoid this sort of lighter area there. That will create our light source. Hopefully, sort of get it to flood through the seam. You can see, this is giving on sort of thicker and thicker. The more distant ones sort of help them create this sort of 3D effect. So I'm just pressing down slightly more to get those the thicker, thicker trunks. I could use the uh, the rigger brush, the, not the rigger brush, the height brush. But I'm just trying it with this. Now what I'm going to do is a few. going in different directions now so especially over this light bit here we've got a whole load of twigs and branches and things cutting straight across getting everywhere all directions a little bit of water just as an experiment i'm just going to try something i'm just going to pick some water at it see what happens just little Dabs of water everywhere. A load of little things growing down below. Because I know there's not, there's hardly any paint on the brush, so I'm not going to screw into that light area. It's a town. A bit of blue. I think I'm just ready now to go at it with the height brush now. Get some really strong trees in there in the foreground. Oh, let's see the height brush out. A bit of brown, a bit of blue, a bit of green. And we've especially got some, got some big trunks. Yeah, need to be a little bit darker, just so it stands out more. What I do then is just dry it and then just put the, the biggest the biggest ones right at the front. Ones. Yeah, let's 
for a few rings on that, it's a bit of brown again. Let's uh, bring that down a little bit further. It's in on a slight slope. What I'm going to do is dry that. First, I'll try and make sure it's flat. of a full brown brown blue strongest mix I've done yet I'm looking at the photo we've got the big one coming out uh, screwed up there in that direction. Looks a bit weird on the painting but I'm just gonna stick the thing back up there like that I think. Just just change it slightly from the from the um from the photograph. Right then, we have a little bit of foliage now, so again, I'm going to give it a quick dry. brush just squeeze the water out into the jar and I'm gonna dry it on the tea so I'll scuff the ears up at the same time so they're going all over the place. And I'm gonna go into a bit of raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow, and I'm start to do a few bits of leaves in there. And just get variations I'm just going lemon yellow and then we'll see that. Then lemon yellow again. I'm trying not to get too far, mate. I don't get paint everywhere. This time I'm going to ultramarine. This time just to darken it. Now it's a little bit darker now. Some of the foliage around here. It's going to paint grey. Obviously on this left hand side we've got this big bushy thing. It's going right down into the this four brown. A bit of brown in there as well, I think. Lemon yellow. 
five pounds per eye. Just cutting in front of these big tree trunks there. Right then. I think I'm ready to put a few shadows in there. First of all, let's just Let's whack some shadows in. Yeah, shadows, a bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of blue. Actually, I've got to clean the brush, that was it. Brown, red, blue. I'm sort of looking for the bluey grey type of mix. And ideally, I'd like to get enough this on the brush, I can do it all in one go, I can go and keep reloading it. I'll just, well I'll see how it goes anyway. Well that should do that. Um, I'm thinking the shadows, I think the natural, I'm, I'm not sort of coming, well, it's coming straight across, so they're sort of going in this direction like that, something like that. So we've got something right out of there. Cutting straight across there. It's always a bit of a pain, so I've got no reference now for this, I'm just sort of making it up as I go along. That's enough shadow there, I think. I think I'll stop. Up there. Up the trees. I think I'm going to stop now with the shadows. Switch to the switch to my little brush now. Should have dried it really. That just makes it a bit more difficult to paint. The mixture I'm gonna put. Shadows coming across. Little bird up there. And I think I'm going to call that one done. I think. So, what I'm going to do now is put me put me name in the corner. Right. 
So last but not least, just about to see that in those shadows. So let's uh, pop a mount on that, see what it looks like. So here's the finished painting in the mains. So if you could have a closer look at it. See just a little bit of ultramarine in the background just for the uh, the blue of the sky that we can see through the trees. If we take a look at the original, you see I've tried to jazz it up a little bit. Move one or two of the tree trunks around just to suit the uh, um, the, the composition a little bit more artistic license. So when you look at it, you see a whole mass of trees and trunks and things. You think, where on earth do I start with all this? But I always start with these distant trees. So just go in with the number three rigger and just keep brushing up and down, up and down, just to create these distant trunks on mass. And because the paper's wet at the time, they just fade off into the distance. So by the time you come to do these ones a little bit closer to the foregrounds, especially the big foreground ones, paper starting to dry and you can see the difference between the, the sort of really dark toned ones and then the really distant ones put in while the paper was still wet. Gives you that three dimensional look that you know, helps create depth to the scene. One thing I was eager to do, I wanted to keep the the ground area as much varied colour variation, but keep it light in tone. Just so all these shadows would look more dramatic. If, the, if I'd done these yellowy bits darker, it wouldn't have shown up as well. And now the one thing missing is a, a focal point, you know, a little figure walking somewhere. And that's where our little friend comes in with his dog. Well, I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Any questions, please ask. Don't forget to keep practicing, and I'll see you again soon.